Welcome to this new add-on spotlight. In this add-on spotlight we're gonna look at working title G3000 version 071 which has been released today. In this update there are several uh, highlights and some fixes. The highlights are mainly related to the GTC options and the flight plan options. Uh, I will show you uh, several ones in a few minutes or a few seconds. Uh, one of the additions for example is I will have the ability to insert the airways in the flight plans but also now there's a flight plan text insert window for the navigation map. I will show you that feature because I think this is a really nice addition. Uh, for the longitude aircraft, uh, there's one specific feature which now supports the GTC flight plan keyboard. It now supports direct entry of routes in the flight plans. Uh, the syntax um, is not clear yet. I'm looking for the uh, the change logs to find out how that exactly works and I will post a video uh, once I found out. In addition to that there are several fixes and one of the most important fixes of course is a compatibility issue fix with sim update number four since you need to uh, since you're kind of forced to update to the latest sim update else you can't play the game anymore uh, where it wouldn't automatically activate approaches. In addition to that, there are several fixes to the flight plan, including uh, fixes for ILS and uh, localized approaches where it, doesn't, where it didn't switch to NAV1 or NAV2, um, or where it actually would switch to NAV1 and 2, but before the inbound on the final approach, which is not good. Uh, then there's an issue fix where it displayed the incorrect uh, lag on the navigation map uh, and the PFD uh, navigation status bar. Uh, specifically looking at the GTC, there are some enhancements made for the accuracy of reporting from the lag to lag distance. The back button has been fixed and there's a graphical glitch affecting certain touchscreen buttons, uh, also a fix. Probably if you're using Navigraph, this is the most important update because now there's an option to remember the account access so you don't have to relink it at each time anymore. Uh, so nice one. And as last one, there's a VFR map fix, preventing the VFR map from being moved when it was not detached to a separate window. Enough talking and reading about the yeah, release notes, let's switch to Flight Simulator. So, this is the G3000 uh, from Working Title. It's, I would say, one of the best ad additions you have for Flight Simulator, uh, especially if you're used to the G3000 uh, standard system. So let's have a look at some options which have been introduced with version 071. So the first one we can find it here. It's in the map settings and you now have the option to set the flight plan text which will add a box below the map which will show either lag to lag information or cumulative information of the flight plan. I will show you uh, which uh, option or what the difference is of those options. Uh, in addition, we got the flight plan, right? The flight plan, uh, I would say, as is, is not changed much, but you now have the option to configure a standby flight plan. So if we, for example, uh, would uh, define a flight plan, in our case, and uh, we would set the uh, source or the airport to Shara Kilo Romeo Golf, uh, we set the destination one to share a kilo uh, Papa Quebec. And you see it's nicely being added here. It's a straight line. There are no other waypoints which we're gonna use. So keep that in mind. Um, if for some reason this airport is closed, it's always nice to have a standby flight plan. What you see with the airline is that they will have the, uh, let's say primary destination, but also an alternate destination. Uh, so what you can do in this case is you can define the uh, standby flight plan. In this case, uh, it I already set it. It's set to uh, Shara Kilo Papa Quebec, and the alternate one is this one Shara Kilo Quebec Uniform. And you can use this uh, the same way like you set the primary plan or the active flight plan. Now, if for some reason during the flight you need to switch from this flight plan to this flight plan, you can click the activate standby flight plan. 
and that will show you a warning and it will replace the active flight plan so now it will be from here to here uh, if this is the correct way of using it that's i would say a discussion maybe uh what's a more i would say realistic um way would be would be to define uh Shara kilo romeo golf um uh, as this one and Shara kilo quebec uniform as this one yeah so if we would look at the active flight plan it would be uh, do we need to do any, redo anything well let me show you how you can clear the flight plan also nice option delete flight plan yes it's deleted uh, return let's look at the standard flight plan delete it so that's something you need to know you need to do it both for the active one and for the uh, standby one so first let's set the active one again share a kilo Romeo Golf share a kilo Papa Quebec and standby flight plan will be Shara Kilo Romeo Golf to Shara Kilo Quebec Uniform. So, active flight plan is this one, standby one is the other one. Uh, the active flight plan will be shown here, right? As soon as we hit activate standby, it will replace it with the other one which is cool so now let's go to home because i want to show you the difference between cumulative and lag to lag actually i don't see much difference <laughs> let's maybe we need to reactivate it oh here this is the difference so here you have the cumulative distance, while here you've got the lag to lag distance. So that's the difference. The difference is uh, this column only. So keep that in mind. I was uh, I was looking for something more uh, advanced. Um, are there any other options? Uh, well, not yet, or at least I didn't find them. Find them yet. Uh, you've got the direct two options, of course, which are. By default there already you've got the charts and this is where you need to have the uh, nav map integration for and then it will display uh, this information uh, really cool but yeah I don't have it if you want to set it up because you have a nav map account you can uh, go to uh, this information to check if the database is ready right in this case you can see that the Navigraph uh, charts are not there if you would click it, it will bring you to uh, the website of Navigraph. Uh, once authenticated, uh, you will um, be able to use the Navigraph database. Uh, as you can see now, it uh, is completely messed up. So I need to uh, figure out how I can uh, can reset it. So if you've got Navigraph, then you can use this functionality. If you don't have Navigraph, uh, yeah, then you can't use it. Um, unfortunately so these are all nice additions so both the default flight simulator map as the navigraph map can be used again keep in mind that you need to have a navigraph account before using this else it won't work here ends this video about the working title g3000 version 0 0.7.1 yes I uh, hope you liked it. It was a small overview about with the focus only on the new stuff which has been added. Uh, if you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to post them below the video in the comment box. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.